you know, if you'd have said in 2013 that 10 years from that point there would be no more Arriva services in Cheshire, I don't think a lot of people would have believed you. However, it's 2023, it's been a couple of weeks, and Arriva have left the area. Today, we're looking at life in Cheshire after Arriva. Yes, hello boys, girls, and all of them between. My name is Lucy Michaela, and welcome to sort of like a third installment of the Reva Saga here in Crew. So we're actually starting the video once again in Crew, like we did last time, um, and having a look at Cheshire once more, but this time we're looking at what's happened post Arriva. So as we all know, um, sort of November last year, I did a video about Arriva's presence in Cheshire as a whole, including Cheshire East, Cheshire West, and then briefly mentioning things like Chester as well. Well, in today's video, we're going to be looking at what we discussed in the previous episode, but like post that, where in the previous time we explained this, we were talking about the fact that Arriva had announced they were leaving the area, and today we're having a look at what the services have become post Arriva leaving, including a few oddities and random changes that have been somewhat negative for the locals, but how they could potentially be only temporary whilst the companies that have jumped in to save the services are working on expanding their um, staffing and also their networks from the areas they're operating from. And we're going to start by looking at the Route 84. Road here, um, and then we'll meet the 84 again further down the road. 
but I uh, just wanted to point that out to you in case you weren't too sure what I actually meant there. Uh, but as we come across down the road here, I'll cut to a clip now, show you the point where the 84 comes back out um, and rejoins the 84 x And that there is where the 84 joins back up. Um, so the 84 serves Williston Village, the 84X does not. So always, as remember, be careful of that when using these services now. reading on the side of it there about the 
special offer that's in place on the 84. Um, so when they first launched the routes, uh, the new routes in uh, the 22nd, well, the 24th of April was the first day, the routes were actually completely free for the first week. Um, and then following that, they now introduced a boomerang ticket. So if you ask for a single, you actually get a free return ticket for the same price, which uh, is quite a nice touch. Um, so no matter which part of the street you're going on between Nantwich and Crewe, if you buy a, a single ticket, you actually get a return um, between the two locations. So it's a pretty nice touch from uh, both Stagecoach and D&G there, as they're both doing it. Um, I believe that will be funded by uh, Cheshire East Council, which is nice. <laughs> And we're jumping off the 84 here. So yeah, so part of the 84 changed, of course, that uh, Stagecoach now reach all the way to Crew. It's also started raining, so it's a bit of a nightmare. But anyway, they have now reached over to Crew, and it has sparked some debate, uh, not only amongst some enthusiasts, but I believe also within Stagecoach management at Mercer, South Lancashire, as to whether they may potentially take the Chester depot um, and make it its own operation under like Stagecoach in Chester, like fully, like take it off the Merseyside and South Lancashire brand. Um, at the moment, it is already a sub brand, Stagecoach in Chester, and it has been since it was taken over. Um, when they took over first Chester and the Wirral, way back when, I think it was 2013 when that happened. Um, but yeah, so there is debates on that. But we just got off that bus there, that one, along with quite a lot of the Enviro interests that have come over um, from other depots, they're actually from the Preston depot. Pretty much most of them are from the Preston depot in terms of the Enviro 300s. The Enviro Functional MCs are coming from a couple of, like Gilmos, for example, the central Liverpool depots. Um, and there potentially will be more vehicles from there coming over when some of the newer buses come in in uh, Liverpool in the coming months as there are of course new fleets due there for both Stagecoach and Arriva over the next coming months. We'll all cover those when we get there. Um, now I'm going to take a quick break in filming for myself but you guys won't notice anything so um, I think we'll do another thing we did last time. Quick click of the fingers like so. Like that. Welcome on board 63111, the next bus in the video. So this is obviously from the first PMT fleet and of course as you can see it's branded for the main line. So one of the slightly odd uh, choices amongst the route uh, saviors was the route 6. Now initially the route 6 was not going to be saved, instead the 12, um, which still did this, was due to sort of take over from it. Um, rather than reparving the 12, they've just uh, guided customers to use the 12 instead of the 6 if they live um, on the estate up in Sha uh, Shavington, um, and then the estate that it used to serve on that end, which is the Brookhouse estate. Um, now the first 12 of the day does go round the Brookhouse estate, so that is worth noting, but the rest of them still do the old routing. Um, and then a section of the 6 on the other end, which was pretty much covered by the 12 anyway, would then be served by the 12. However, the first PMT then stepped in um, about two weeks before, uh, about four weeks before uh, the planned time for the takeover um, and announced that they would in fact be taking on the crew hot bus station to Leighton Hospital section of the Route 6, which they still do today. Now, as expected, the Route 3 comes in, terminates, but then goes round as a 6, comes back again, and then goes back out as the 3. So technically this adds a new route to the mainline brand. Um, however, I do believe this may be a trial um, while they potentially look at extending the Route 3 down to Leighton Hospital instead and have a direct route through would make a lot more sense and I think they've just done this to familiarise pa uh, passengers who use the 6 to late in hospital with what route they're actually using. The route currently doesn't track on bus time so it has got a timetable on there but the buses do not track on this route. I'm not too sure why, if anyone does know please let me know down below. But we're going to be on this one down to late in hospital and then when we get there we'll connect for our next route we're covering today. So it's only a short hop on this today but it is nice to get the other livery in. Um, on bus miles while doing so. Let's have a look around. Love. I feel it growing every day. I feel the love. I feel the love. I hope it never goes away. I feel the love. is a new route of this brand you're a new, a new viewer and you haven't already why not subscribe and while you're down there click the like button if you're enjoying the video when you do subscribe turn on the notification bell so you know when the next video goes live
you don't mind me standing under a bike shelter, it's currently raining again. We just jumped off probably the most unhealthy sounding street I've ever been on in my life, 6311. The bus had some dodgy brake sounds every so often, so they were rubbing really badly, um, and the engine itself was sort of screaming for help. Uh, a lot of the panels were falling apart, so I'm not too sure what's happened to that one. It's been through quite a battering since it's uh, refurb into the new mainline scheme. You know, we're now going to be checking out the Route 31, which will take us up to Winsford to then check out possibly the oddest route of the saved routes from the Arriva closure. Um, but the 31 and 37 are still into work with each other on a shared board, and they now regularly see Enviro 200s, plus the odd strange vehicle, including one that I've seen today as a streetlight wheel forward. Really inappropriate for those routes, um, but it has sparked some debate as to the benefits of DNG taking over, as DNG are still refusing to look at deckers for their fleet, which would benefit the 31 and 37, as during school times these routes can get extremely crowded. Um, so I really do think DNG need to look at getting some deckers into their fleet personally. But nonetheless, we're going to be using it today on a sort of lunchtime run, so it shouldn't be too busy. I'm hoping so anyway. Um, up to Winsford from here at Leighton Hospital. The 31 being the only of the two Norfolk routes to surf Leighton Hospital, the other one, the 37, um, goes a more direct route out of crew towards Winsford. Seven, eight, eight, nine. 
39. So we jumped off of 33 there, walked straight across the road to jump onto this. Now the reason I had to rush for this is because the route W7, which was previously uh, the 7A and 7C routes, which would have been the clockwise and clockwise version of the circular, is now just called the W7 and only goes on to one side. I believe it used to go to two sides. There's only a one-sided circular now. It's a very limited service. So this was saved in some regard. I guess you could say saved. This runs from about 9 o'clock in the morning. I believe it's the 10 to 10 is the first one. And then the 10 to 2, which is this one, um, is the last one of the day, except on Wednesdays when it's the 1320. The route does a full circular usually, uh, with two runs terminating at the Queen's, which is just around the corner there, which is what this one does, as well as the one at 1220 off of that stop, Winsford Library. So it goes here, it goes, uh, so usually goes around the circle, serves this stop twice, and then usually it will go around a little circular back, or sort of like around the corner and back to that stop there. Um, so it's a very, very limited service. Um, and as far as I understand it, this was literally only saved to help the shoppers of Winsford during the day, Monday to Friday, with no service on this route on Saturdays or Sundays. It doesn't mean that Winsford has lost out quite a bit there, as the previous circulars would run Monday to Saturday and would run until about 7 o'clock at night. So they have missed out on quite a bit of service there. However, I do believe there are plans by Stagecoach, not only for this route, but also for the 84 we looked at earlier, that once more drivers been hired, they actually have adverts along the side of pretty much all the buses at the moment to say, join our Chester team. I believe once they have hired more bus drivers for the Chester depot, they are going to look at expanding both late night services on the 84, but also bring in this W7 service a bit more frequent, running later into the evening, starting earlier in the day, and of course, Saturday and potentially even Sunday services, Stagecoach do run on Sundays. It is worth mentioning that the 84 does run on Sundays to an hour and a half, every hour and a half, so every 90 minutes service, with the 84X running hourly as well. Um, so that's why Stagecoach are trying their best. But they have got a lot less drivers to play with at the moment compared to DNG Bus, where most of the Arriva drivers transferred to, which was DNG Bus. Um, However, I, and I am curious, I'm not too sure whether or not Arriva drivers did get a job with Stagecoach, they potentially did do. But again, we're on this short circuit, it's only 25 minutes long, this circuit, about 25 to 30 minutes long. So we're on this very short circular round uh, Winsford, and then when I get off, I'll do a better explanation um, of the 31 and this route as well, not a better explanation, but I'll explain a bit more about Winsford itself, um, and we'll do a bit more of a summary um, of the vehicle itself as well. an odd little route that but there goes 27889 on well now off to the depot having just done the last W7 of the day so it is fully funded by Cheshire West Council I just checked that um, and it appears well from what I can by looking at the timetables it's just the one driver who does it all day there's even a break halfway through the day for them to get their lunch break with 1140 being the last one until 13 50. So there is a bit of a break in the middle of the day as well. It is a bit of an odd service, but it's good that they at least have something going, and I believe that the council will probably look into funding a little bit more for them in the future. I'm going to take a quick break from filming now, and I'll join you in a moment when we're ready to get the 37 up to Northwich. Saved. Um, so the X31 is now a Friday and Saturday only service running in the evening. 
evenings only and it's sort of branded on the website as the Nightlife Express um, with the idea of it being that it links people off Winsford to Northwich to have a bit of a night out if they so wish. Um, but it only runs on Fridays and Saturdays which means on Friday nights, on Fridays there's like an end of service at 13.50 and then a start again at like 7 o'clock and on Saturdays there's the only service around that Winsford estate from 7 o'clock in the evening which is a little bit odd uh, but it is officially one of the latest services now run by DNG alongside the 38 which now still runs to midnight thanks to some funding from Cheshire East Council with the X31 uh, and that W7 service of course both funded by Cheshire West Council. We're on this to Northwich, I'm actually nearly there, I had to do this a bit later because it's been a pretty busy bus. Um, and again, as I mentioned at Leighton, uh, I had a few of these routes but I cope too well with single deckers and this one was nearly full, leaving uh, Winsford, so again, really need some double deckers on these routes. I'll see you on in Northwich. here in Northwich it is worth talking about the local circulars here. So Arriva refined the local circulars last November, uh, like they did with the Winsford ones, to introduce the routes 1 and 4 to sort of simplify the circulars. Well these were saved in a rather odd way. So D&G confirmed they would be saving the route 1 as it stood um, from the moment that the takeover happened on the 24th of April where Arriva would back down. However it took a bit longer for the other one to be confirmed and it came in the form of Warrington's confirming that they would be taken on the 4 as the N4, which is a bit confusing because normally N routes are night routes from my experience, because obviously I'm from London, um, but of course N here standing for Nantwich. Now the N4 has a slightly more confusing pattern and timetable and I would cover that today, however I've decided to focus on the 1, um, to stick with the D&G bus theme, but also I was going to do the N4 but I'm going to cut that out and then I'm going to do a trip back to crew after this one um, and once we've done that I'll then cut to another day, well I should do the 38 back to Mac probably in the video and then I'll cut to another day where we're going to then cover the Macclesfield stuff as well. So um, I'll see you on board. Um, nothing down to D&G in fact, um, 
just on this one alone. We've currently been through three bouts of roadworks, and there's a fourth bout on the other end of the circular. So this one is now about 35, maybe even nearly 40 minutes later. I can't check because my phone has died time-wise. Um, so I can't check any details on the um, delay on this, also on the history of this bus. But I will update you once I get my phone recharged. We're on this back round to the full medium part of the circular back to Northwich and then once you get there I'm going to quickly try and find a place to charge my phone and we'll get on the bus back to crew. off that super delayed route one there that's now going to head off on the Rudheath half of the circular which is also now cut by the 82 they extended that route two to sort of give Rudheath still that sort of regular service it gets two bus routes but the 82 finishes earlier than the route one that runs up until seven o'clock at night whereas the 82 has just finished with its last departure off Rudheath um, so yeah that's already finished I'm now going to head off and find somewhere to charge my phone for a little bit and then we're going to jump on the first bus well the bus the last bus of the day that goes from here to crew which is the 1750 route 31 might be the 37 I always get them too mixed up um, back to crew and then when we get to crew I'm going to then head back to Macclesfield um, and when we do that we'll cover both routes there is a chance by the way that this video may get split in two um, but I'm going to decide that when I edit this half of the recording, so I'm going to record over two days um, as the Maxwell ones I'm going to have to come back to another day just because of how they're all timed out. Um, but anyway, I'll see you all on the next bus.
crew and then we get to crew we'll change final final bus of this of today in the video and then we'll cut to the following day for the Macclesfield bit but as I said this could have been made in two parts by now and if it has then obviously I'll have edited it some way but it doesn't uh, but anyway I'm shut now and get back to uh, I'm gonna go look around crew now in the early evening light now of course at this time of the year the evening takes a long time it starts around about now when it takes at about nine o'clock for the sun to finally set so it'll be very nice a little evening ride home on the 38 next um, which I'll be getting the first one that comes along because they're hourly at this point I mean it was are but the hourly um, thing means that uh, the next one isn't until gone seven and I don't really fancy being in crew for too long um, I do want to actually get home at some point tonight. It takes like two hours on the 38 anyway. Um, but that there was 506. And you actually see on the front um, briefly, I don't even manage to get a brief clip of it, but you can see evidence of where it was based at Leicester. And bringing, on Le bringing up Leicester is a good topic. So Leicester, uh, which has got centre bus presence, um, is now being forced, like the city council there are now enforcing a fully electric fleet over the coming year or so, where the entire centre bus and first, uh, sorry, and the Riva fleet there are due for replacement with a brand new, like, Leicester City branded green theme, um, with centre bus being given, like, new buses as part of it. Meaning there will be potentially more vehicles coming this way from the centre bus fleet, or potentially going to high peak and displacing buses there, but the point is, there are more buses on the way. But it's not just from centre bus. From what I've been told from insider knowledge, there are already two solo SRs that have just been bought from Ross Travel Group. Editing me cutting in once again. So these have actually already entered service at the time of uploading. There are two. Number 136, which is a 59 plate. This will be staying with D&G bus. And then number 297, which is a 60 free plate and this one is going to be heading over to High Peak to replace 296 which unfortunately was involved in a very fatal RTC which wrote the vehicle off earlier this year which we have seen before you'll remember those from when we spotted at Wakefield check the corner video for that one um, but yeah so with us knowing that um, those are potentially going to replace two vehicles in the fleet um, or bolster the fleet I'm not too sure what the plan is there I would like to see them replace the 256 plate um, X Abellio E200s because those are falling apart at this point anyway not gonna help DNG how to run themselves I'm gonna go and find somewhere to kill some more time while I wait for the 38 
session is a bus already had before, it's 53, one of the two Abellio London uh, E200s, and again these ones are ones I do hope get replaced with these new uh, two solo missiles that have come um, over this way from Ross Travel Group, but as far as I'm aware they're actually going to get repainted and renumbered before they enter service, unlike the rest of the fleet that was brought over for the change.